Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. This content is not for children under the age of 18. Not for kids. Not for children. I'm the Benjamin Pin and I have a pin. Yin. Oh. Hi, human. I'm Sir Benjamin Pin. I am a talking miniature pincher, and I have opinions on pretty much everything. Today, we're going to be talking about brand new news regarding Masters of the Universe Revelations, the new Kevin Smith Netflix show that's a direct sequel to the 1980s animated filmation cartoon. Entertainment Weekly just released a news article regarding Masters of the Universe Revelations. Today, I'm going to be reading you that entire article, as long as showing you the pictures on the screen. There will be a direct link to the article below, so be sure to check my comments if you want to visit their page. This is from the article. I'll be reading to you directly. And yes, I can also read. Can Battle Cat read? I don't think so. I hope you enjoyed the article as much as I did. You ready? Here we go. From EW.com. Masters of the Universe Revelation unleashes a power with a first look at Kevin Smith's series. The animated sequel will be split into two parts, with part one premiering on Netflix July 23rd, 2021. By the power of Grayskull, He-Man is having a pop culture moment. After Netflix's She-Ra and the Princess of the Power ended its five-season run, Prince Adam and the World of Eternia are coming back full force to the limelight with a planned live-action movie in addition to a CG animated He-Man and the Masters of the Universe show that is aimed for kids. But Masters of the Universe Revelation, a separate animated series from the mind of Kevin Smith, is designed for fans of the 1980s cartoon. EW's exclusive first look at Revelation brings back Prince Adam slash He-Man, now voiced by Supergirl's Chris Wood, and the gang with a new design by Powerhouse Animation, who did Castlevania, and an updated story set directly after the events of that original piece of childhood entertainment. Quote, Everything I've worked on in like 27 years, this is easily the top five of my favorite, most satisfying projects, says Kevin Smith, a He-Man superfan who also showruns Revelation, with executive producers Frederick Soli, Adam Bonet, Christopher Keenan, and Rob David. Quote, When I die, they'll be like, he made clerks, remember? Because that's the most memorable thing I think I've ever done. I think this has a running shot at being like, he made clerks and that one cartoon that one time. End quote. Split into two parts, with the five episodes of part one, Premiering on Netflix this July 23, 2021, the show features an all-star voice cast ensemble. That includes Star Wars veteran Mark Hamill as Skeletor, Game of Thrones Lena Headley as Evil Lynn, Buffy the Vampire Slayer's Sarah Michelle Gellar as Tila, Clueless star Alicia Conroy, a.k.a. Alicia Silverstone, as Queen Marlena, and also the original voice of Skeletor, Alan Oppenheimer, now in the role of Moss Man. Since this is a prequel series, the main mythos remains intact. Prince Adam, the son of ruling family of the realm of Eternia, uses a sword of power to transform into the chiseled He-Man to defend his kingdom from threats, mostly from Skeletor and his forces. But now, as Smith says, quote, the shackles are off, unquote, to build a richer lore and explore different aspects to these beloved characters. Quote, We get to see them engage in not just clashing swords, but in far deeper conversations than we've ever seen them before. It's not just simply like these two dudes have been trying to beat each other up for decades. We get to tell the stories of abuse. We get to tell the kind of stories of isolation and grief. We use these characters as long as they've been around. And... Most people consider them toys or action figures to tell insanely human stories in a very inhuman world, unquote. David, 
who previously developed He-Man comics at DC, was brought in by Mattel to redevelop Masters of the Universe across entertainment landscapes. The creative have read Kevin Smith's Daredevil comics, Guardian Devil, when he was at Marvel, and was struck by how he had found new ways to tell the story while honoring the source material. Together, they crafted what he refers to as a love letter for fans who watched the original show as a kid and who are now adults. That doesn't mean Revelation is on the level of something like Amazon's blood-splattered hero show, Invincible, which Smith mentions and admires. But it does mean that in the writer's room, consisting of Mark Bernardin, Eric Casaraco, Dia Mishra, and Tim Sheridan got to raise the stakes in ways you wouldn't normally do, David adds. David says, and quote, characters could die, not saying that they will, but they could, unquote. Kevin Smith remembers speaking with Netflix director of original series, Ted Biasilli, who also came with a childhood love with the sword and sorcery saga and sat in on the writer's room, tossing out ideas. He said, quote, do me a favor. When I used to watch the show as a kid, I legitimately thought that He-Man was always on the verge of getting killed by Skeletor. I believed in the stakes. Just make me believe that again, he said. People would see some of this as goofy IP, but this is a rich tapestry, a world full of characters. Please just don't talk down to it. Don't make fun of it. Don't wink. Just treat it like Shakespeare. Those were our marching orders. Unquote. The first episode of Revelation begins, quote, in a lockstep with the old show, unquote, Smith mentions. Then, about halfway through, quote, things take a shift, which allows the characters to go through these periods of growth, unquote. David mentions a catalytic event that would shake it up, unquote. The pair keep any further specifics about what cataclysm is under lock and key, but Kevin Smith does go on to explain that, quote, only certain people know the secret that Prince Adam is really He-Man. We build our entire story on who is left out of the secret and the damage trickle-down effects of that. It's a story about a hero who has to live under the deception in order to protect those he loves, but it's about how that deception rots at the core, unquote. David sees a story told in Revelation in two acts, which is why Netflix is releasing the episodes in two parts. Part one felt like a really great act break, he said. You get into it and you're like, oh man, this is just dramatic. The game has changed. The characters at the beginning of Revelation are going to be very different than they were at the end, he adds. The devotion to the worlds of Masters of the Universe feels palpable. That extends to everyone involved. David shares a fond memories of learning, quote, how to tell the stories from playing with the toys growing up, unquote, while Smith, the kind of person who can speak about this material for hours without catching a breath, notes that composer Bear McCreary, quote, gave us a score this show doesn't even deserve. Mark Hamill had talked about wanting to step out of animation, but he was like, when you came to me with Skeletor, how could I say no? Unquote. He had a similar experience chatting with Heedy. Quote, there was such a fervency and love for the property, he says. Liam Cunningham as Man at Arms, Griffin Noonan as Orko, Stephen Root as Cringer, Diedrich Badger as King Randor, and Trapjaw, Tiffany Smith as Andrea, Henry Rollins as Triclops, Susan Eisenberg as Sorceress, Jason Muse as Stinkor, Phil Lamar as Hero, Tony Dodd as Scareglow, Cree Summer as Priestess, and Kevin Michael Richardson as Beastman round out the main cast. For David, quote, becoming the best version of yourself, unquote, has always been at the heart of He-Man, and it's true now revelation. Quote, we wanted to reiterate that, but make it even more broad, he says. It's not just that he-Man has something special inside him, but every character and every viewer, we all have the power, unquote. 
Thanks for watching my videos, human. Until next time. I'm Sir Benjamin Pin, and I have a pin. Yins. Be sure to visit me on our social media platforms, including Patreon, where you can vote on what I review next.